Hello, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. So this episode is about getting more freedom in your job. And I thought about doing this podcast because we have in previous episodes talked about entrepreneurship and unjobbing and ways of achieving more freedom through uh, pursuing either entrepreneurship or unjobbing. But what about if you're in a job? I mean, does that mean that you just can't be free and you, you basically just stuck? And I think that uh, the answer to that is definitely no. And I, def- I think there's a, a huge amount that can be done within a job to get more freedom. Um, so, so it is a false dichotomy between having a crap job uh, with no freedom and going all the way over to becoming an entrepreneur or doing unjobbing and having like maximum freedom. There's a huge amount of variance in how much freedom you have in your job. And... If you do, if you are in a job, um, there's a lot that you can do to increase the level of freedom that you have. And there are good reasons for some people to be in jobs. I mean, it might suit you better if you're not ready or able at the moment to find the startup co- uh, costs to go into entrepreneurship, for example. Or you might not yet know what your passions are for unjobbing. Or you might need money fast, even if in the long run it's not really as lucrative to be an employee as it is to go into um, entrepreneurship. It's still, you know, in the first couple of years of entrepreneurship, you know, it's actually really challenging in terms of money. You just don't have any. So you also might need stability for a while. And, um, you know, a job can be a great opportunity to do that while you're to get that while you're thinking about doing other things. And, uh, you know, it's better to earn money than do nothing if you're not ready for entrepreneurship or on jobbing. You don't really know what you would like to do yet and so forth. So this is going to be about how to get more freedom, you know, when you are in a jobbing environment. And I guess what I'll try and do is provide some background from the perspective of having employed people and looked at it from that angle. I mean, I, I have also worked in various jobs at different times so I've experienced different levels of freedom in the jobs that I've had as well but I'd like to um, to talk from the perspective of, of employing people and I'll talk about some of the things that I think worked better in terms of giving people freedom within their, the job um, within my company um, I certainly had a lot of different attempts at trying to do this and I don't you know if, if I ever do entrepreneurship in the future I would really like to provide more freedom for the people who work for me than I was able to achieve when I did have my company. I will put it in the show notes, but there's an interesting documentary on YouTube about a company in Brazil who are just way more radical in the level of freedom that they provide their employees than I ever had the courage to be um, and the experience to be when, when I had my company. Um, and that, I think, is a great documentary to, to look at if you're interested in thinking about what would be the most optimal level of freedom that you could have in, as an employee. Um, and so that's something that I aspire to next time I do entrepreneurship, um, is certainly to do this better. So what is uh, freedom at work anyway? What does it mean to have freedom within a jobbing environment, within, within a job? I think there's a number of key principles about the level of freedom that you have. You're more free the more you get to agree voluntarily on the, all the different aspects of your job. Of course, a job is a voluntary thing. You can leave at any time and so forth. But there's a huge difference between having a job where you turn up and basically someone says, you're going to do what I tell you to do, um, and you have no idea what that might encompass, and a job where you've had a very clear understanding of what you're, you know, what you're agreeing to and what you're going to get into. And that, I think, has a huge impact on, on how free you feel. And the next aspect, I think, um, of of what freedom and really the the key one probably is the level of autonomy you have right the, the extent to which you are able to just get on and do your own thing in your job make your own decisions so you know in the worst case you have that feeling of being micromanaged being told it, having to ask each time what what it is that you need to do next versus 
the sense that you can just get on with it, make your own decisions and, and really fly through your day. And that, I think, is something that gives you a huge amount of sense of freedom if you do have the more autonomy you have within a job. And I guess the third aspect is the sense in which you have, you're given the space and the room to really feel like you can master your art of whatever it is that you're doing. You get a chance to grow in your work and really be good and feel like you're doing really good work. I mean, there are some jobs where you feel like you don't really get to use your skills or develop them or improve or, you know, uh, practice what it is you want to do versus other jobs where you really feel like you're doing great work and and you're able to i mean that's a kind of expression as well if you're able to really do good work um, it's very rewarding in itself and i guess lastly it's really important the extent to which in your job you're working with people who you feel that you can be yourself with and who you feel that you're working at something that you actually want to do not a job where you never wanted to be there in the first place but with People and it's with people who you really feel like you can actually just be yourself. That has a huge impact on on uh, on the level of freedom you you have. So how do you get more freedom if you're in a job? Well, I think in achieving these things, there's a, a huge amount that you can do yourself to actually get more freedom into the job. Firstly, I, I think it makes a huge difference if you can get a clear and explicit um, agreement on what your role and responsibilities are. That just has a huge impact on the level of autonomy that you're able to have in the job. So I'm not just talking about the, you know, the legal contract. I'm, I'm actually talking more about your job description, basically. How clear is it what it is that you are responsible for, what your role is and what your responsibilities are? Again, in a worst case scenario, you just have to ask somebody the whole time whether or not you can do something or you should do something. You have a huge level of uncertainty. In the best case scenario, you can be left alone because it's very clear what it is that you are supposed to be doing, you know, what your risk role is. So, for example, in my company, we tried to be really, really clear about this. We had explicitly written down roles and responsibilities. There were like the main uh, revenue earning roles like uh, researcher and consultant and um, project manager and so forth. And these were all written down. They were on our internal wiki. Everyone could see what everyone's roles were. They got regularly updated and changed as roles developed. But as well as the at the main role, people had internal responsibilities in addition. And so those were all written down too, like there would be the webmaster or the marketing materials manager or whatever it was. And so each person would have a unique constellation of their, their main role and their other responsibilities. And they would all, it would all be very explicit what those roles were. And that means that people just knew what their jobs were. They could just get on with it, basically. So that's the first thing. If you don't have this, I would really recommend that you just simply write it down yourself and email it to your boss and say, I, I think this is what my responsibility is. That way you can get a discussion going. You can make, make it actually explicit. Um, the second thing is to get explicit agreement on what the methods and the standards are that you will use in your work. Every organization has expectations about what kind of the way that things get done and what level of you know, what standards get applied to the work that you do. When this isn't clear, you have no idea as to whether or not you're on the right track or, or, or what. And, you know, then again, you're kind of dependent on somebody else telling you whether you're doing things right. Right. Whereas if it is clear, you can just get on with your work and you can have a lot of freedom in doing so. So the way that we tried to approach this um, in my company is we had an internal wiki. And I mean, for us, standards were very important because we were doing a lot of statistical analysis they, those things need to be done the same way in order for results to be comparable and stuff. So it's really important that people knew how, you know, what the methods were for what we were doing. So we had an internal wiki. Everybody contributed to, to this, and there were pages, how-to pages on all the things that we did. So there would be a how-to page for a particular kind of spatial analysis, and there would be a how-to page for putting together a report and all of these kind of things. And that way... It's all clear to everyone what the standards are that we have. And again, you could just get on with it. And of course, everyone 
was a part of that, of, of building those standards, and they do change and evolve over time. If you're working in an organization where they have an operations manual, but it's something that's dusty and on a shelf and nobody ever looks at it and it's irrelevant because it's never been used anyway, that's a very, you know, that kind of thing is totally unhelpful. And that doesn't actually give you any freedom. In fact, it's more of just a, um, like an admin burden. But if you actually have a clear agreement on what your method should be, then you can really get on with your work. The last thing to talk about in terms of things that you can actively do is to get agreed objective um, measures of what success in your job will look like. So, I mean, personally, I am a fan of targets because I think those things can be objective and they can be agreed. So in other words, if success in your job is just dependent on your boss arbitrarily saying whether or not he or she thinks that you've done a good job, well, you really are not free because I mean, you're, just, you're at their whims, so to speak. Whereas if there's an agreement that this is what will happen if you know, success looks like this, A, B, C, and D will be done, then you know yourself how well you're doing in your job. So, for example, I would have monthly meetings with all of the, the team, with each member individually, and we would agree what the targets were together for the next month, right? And, you know, that, they were always things that could be measured independently of me. So, for example, they might be about being on time and on budget with a particular project. They might, but they would also be about internal things like, you know, amount of contribution to the wiki, for example, number of pages, changes, and, and these kinds of things, where things that you can actually measure, which are helpful, you know, which are important for the business. And so every employee knew how well they were doing, regardless of my opinion, right? So and I think when you do that, if you have those things in place, you know, you know what your role and responsibility is. You know what the standards are that you're going to be working with, the methods that you're going to be working with, and you know what success looks like. If all of those things are agreed, you really should have the freedom in, in, in that environment to be yourself, and just to get on with your job, because those are the only things that matter, right? Those are, if you do those things, then you are flying as far as your job is concerned, and your employer, if they're a good employer, they will be incredibly happy because finding people who you know take responsibility for knowing what their job is and getting on with it and meeting their targets and, and you know doing really well uh, is is really fantastic for um, the, they're the people you want on a team and you really do everything you can to hold on to those people to give them opportunities to shower them with with you know potential opportunities and stuff because they're absolutely key people that you want to keep so if you do these things, you'll either find that you, you have a receptive employer, employer who will welcome your contributions to clarifying your role, welcome your contributions to clarifying what the standards and methods are, welcome your contributions to agreeing what success targets are. Or if you don't have an employer that welcomes those things, then it may be that you need to find a different employer who will. And obviously there are huge differences between jobs where you can potentially have freedom like this or you can't um, but that's that's I think what it looks like and I would say that one of the reasons that it's really important to proactively take responsibility for this yourself is just from an employer um, perspective I I think it's really difficult to actually do things like clearly define roles clearly define um, the methods and standards and clearly defined um, the objective targets for people it's very difficult and often it's not necessarily unwillingness from the employer it might just be that they're not actually that good at it but if you are in the job yourself you're actually probably in the best place in many circumstances to know what success should look like um, on certain specific types of things to do with your job to define clearly what the methods should be and what your role should be so you know again you you may you're either going to be able to find an employer who really uh, appreciates uh, your contributions and, and it is a negotiation to be had obviously um, they may have a you, know, you you may there may be differences in expectations about what success might look like and that's fine because once you know once it's all out on the table then those differences can be agreed but um but it's, this is why you have to take responsibility for yourself, because 
employers don't necessarily know the best way forward. So it's up to you to to define that. And if they don't welcome it, and if they don't, if this doesn't help in the job, then at least that may be good, uh, useful information about what potential there is for you to really uh, get more freedom in, in this role. And it may be actually that that tells you, no, it's not going to work in this environment. I'll, I'll find a different job where it can. But um, I really wish you all the best of luck in trying it. Um, and I hope that this is helpful in terms of getting real freedom into, into a period of employment in your life. Okay, thanks very much for listening.